now we will go to chapter two, where we will uh, zoom in and discuss about location data and technologies. Um, in fact, the core um, element and idea of location data is that we will try to start from this real world with the buildings, the streets, our environment, and try to model that uh, in our computer. And we, of course, use uh, certain technologies for doing that to manage the data and to use the data afterwards. Uh, what are location data and technologies? Um, they have evolved. Everyone knows uh, the traditional paper maps. Uh, this is a very old example, uh, but uh, everyone knows still the Michelin maps may be used for going on holiday. Uh, but that has evolved uh, where newer technologies uh, are used to create uh, dynamic 3D visualizations of our real world on our screen on our computer. This is an example of Google Earth that everyone knows uh, of the city of uh, Singapore with a lot of uh, information, of course. So location data and technologies have not always been the same uh, and are very uh, variable. Uh, what do we speak about? Location data can be uh, many things. It can go from buildings and road networks, on the road networks, bus stops, but also public spaces like squares, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we know all about addresses. Uh, address systems in every country uh, are available, so you can find your way. Uh, but also cadastral parcels. They are not physical visible, uh, but they are a legal uh, delineation of what we call uh, ownership parcels. Uh, but also protected areas, that's an example. It's more uh, a political decision to delineate uh, certain areas as protected zones, for example. But it can be also very dynamic data, such as traffic data, air quality that is changing over time, uh, weather data that are collected through weather stations and then uh, dynamically uh, transferred into maps, etc. It can be about distribution of diseases, of species, of a population, and much, much more. And, and also the formats in which it is coming can be very different. Uh, we refer to the traditional maps in the 3D scenes, but also address can come in the form of a CSV file or even an Excel file, etc. Or we can have, for example, this weather or air quality data in time series, uh, collected in databases, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very variable. It's all about location data. Uh, but what is specific in location data is that uh, they are constructed uh, uh, to build location intelligence. So what is being done is that we start from this real world and that the real world is modeled and to say so, stored in the computer as a simplified model of this real world. Uh, we do that by uh, referring to the Earth as a globe with a lat long reference system. Uh, so we know on each place for each location, a coordinate in X, Y, but also in Z uh, uh, values. Uh, and then we organize all this information in the form of layers. Uh, for example, you can have a layer on administrative boundaries. You can have a layer on land use, a layer on soils, a layer with buildings, etc. So logically speaking, you build uh, data sets, location data uh, based on uh, thematic fields and uh, content. And you can represent it in different ways. You can store it and manage in different way. Uh, two examples are vectorial data where uh, you have linear elements or in raster format, it's rather as a picture. So you have different ways to do it, but you build with uh, this relationship with the real world uh, intelligence into your system. Uh, also intelligence comes up when you try to uh, link location data uh, with uh, other information. Uh, for example, the, the map at the bottom is the outbreaks at a, a subnational level 
uh, of COVID-19 in the EU with different colors. So the, the attribute is here, uh, the outbreaks, number of outbreaks, and then you classify this and you create the map as you see uh, on many portals. Uh, another example is at the top where you see these uh, protected areas, Natura 2000 areas. These are uh, bird from the bird directive and the habitat directive, where you have not only information about the protected areas where they are situated, but also you have additional information about these areas, what type of uh, protected area it is, what habitats are in there through the standard data form, the area covered, when it was defined, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we link information to so-called spatial or location objects, and we store usually this information in database management systems. Uh, but you need also uh, location uh, technologies to do something with the data. And uh, typically uh, for collecting, you can rely on many uh, typical devices. You can collect data uh, through satellite imagery. You can uh, drive around with a car like Google is doing, collecting automatically information through uh, cameras. Uh, you can collect information on location through your mobile. You can have also citizen science projects where you count, for example, butterflies and collect this and bring this in, in databases where you connect also to location, et cetera. So location technologies uh, in general will support different types of operations and functions. First, you need all kinds of technologies to capture, collect, and create data, as I have been indicating with some examples. But then you need also to manage, maybe to transform and to publish location data. That's another set of functionalities. Uh, you might need to process, integrate, and analyze location data. This is really the power of location technologies. It's not just managing and collecting data and visualizing or presenting data, but also you can do something, you can analyze the data. We'll give examples on each of those. And the fourth big uh, uh, type of functionality is to present and visualize location data because of course, typically location data are uh, on, uh, represented in a certain way, not of course, in, only in tabular form. If we look into the data collection, uh, I uh, gave some earlier some other examples, but nowadays we use a lot of drones uh, or similar devices uh, to collect information via camera. Um, so that's one type of technology. Uh, there is LiDAR scanning where systematically 3D point clouds are uh, collected and generated to build up, for example, uh, a data set of the buildings or uh, vegetation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, of course, satellite imagery there are they are abundant. Uh, alone in uh, the EU with the Copernicus program, terabytes of data are generated almost every day, uh, and so uh, there is huge amounts of information for different purposes coming from these satellite images. Um, the typical, if you uh, drive around in the street, sometimes you will see total stations, a GPS. Uh, GPS will be in Europe, Galileo um, in the future. So a lot more technologies exist. Uh, for example, in general sensors, there are everywhere sensors now, and these sensors can really generate uh, location uh, data. Uh, and they generate these data systematically. Of course, there are some rules. If data are coming from mobile devices, you might have privacy issues. Um, managing data is required to structure the data, but you have the general ICT data management techniques to store the data somewhere on servers to, so that different users can reach them. Um, but it's also, uh, potentially needed that we transfer uh, or transform uh, the data in different formats, for example, to offer them in different formats, or you might for in being able to integrate and use them together also need to do model transformations, et cetera. Uh, and then another uh, set of 
managing functions relates to the publication, typically what we will do is to publish location data in portals, in the European data portal, in a specific geo portals, but you might also uh, make them uh, visible through uh, applications, of course, uh, for particular user communities. So managing data is very important, although maybe not so uh, visible and clear to the outside world. But the, the real uh, strength of uh, location data and technologies is in the analytical capabilities. Uh, so we will be able with GI technologies, with uh, location technologies to process the data. We have uh, analytical, analytical techniques and functions to answer, in fact, the where questions we mentioned in chapter one. Uh, a, a typical example that you know from your GPS is, of course, uh, network analysis, uh, routing problems going via different points to a certain uh, other city or a particular shop or whatever. Um, uh, typically, when we speak about these dynamic event data, weather data, air quality, uh, etc., we collect information through sensor at particular points. But of course, these points and the measurements there doesn't say much. So what we will do is to interpolate, for example, air quality or weather data to generate real maps that are understandable by anyone. So uh, data coming from these sensors. And another example is when we will combine different data layers to try to analyze, for example, uh, how many uh, uh, houses are for rent across a certain route uh, or road section, for example. This is just one example. So you are able to query your data, location data, to find answers on the questions that we raised in chapter one. Visualization is very important. Uh, it's an important part of location data and technologies. We have the traditional maps. Here you see the example of the less favorite areas uh, in Europe. Uh, so where you are classified less favorite areas according to the regulation, and you make just a traditional map out of that. Uh, more and more, we use 3D visualizations of buildings, of vegetations, of uh, many things. Um, so 3D is almost a must nowadays. And they are also the base for, for example, the development of digital twins. Heat maps for monitoring dynamic phenomena uh, is used a lot, for example, in uh, transport uh, and mobility questions, but also in other, also in environmental questions, it is used, heat maps, um, for more uh, di monitoring dynamic phenomena. Um, and then uh, there is this uh, interactive visualization techniques uh, with different type of immersive visualization techniques such as uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. Here is the example of augmented reality to visualize what is not visible, but what is underground, for example, uh, pipelines, sewer systems, or whatever. So we can visualize and present complex phenomena in an easy to understand way. That's typically functionalities of uh, location technologies. And then I will end with some uh, uh, perspective on new developments. Um, the digital twins I already mentioned because we have a lot of 3D uh, data of our cities, of our rural landscape now. Um, so we will really create a twin of uh, the real environment, the re reality, so we, we will go one step further. As we said, we use new visualization techniques, um, is done in a lot of sectors. Um, we use more and more event-driven dynamic data, so from sensors, which allows through sensor web enablement to integrate it in with different other databases. And of course, the amount of data, also location data has uh, uh, expanded so much that we need new big data analytics uh, uh, approaches. So uh, other aspects that are included is the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. So all the general uh, developments that we see are also having an impact on uh, our location technologies. So what we have seen here in this chapter is that uh, location data uh, is not one type of data, but it's very diverse. 
most importantly, that uh, location data are uh, providing a model of the real world. So this relationship is key and is also the base for making location uh, data very intelligent. So we link all the different location objects to each other. Uh, and we also can uh, link it to other information so that we can uh, get new insights. Uh, and the location technologies themselves, they allow the user to create, to manage, analyze, and visualize location data. So it's very broad and it allows us to answer the location related questions we uh, put on the table in chapter one. And with this, chapter two has come to an end.